Hello and welcome back to the last and final episode of my exhibition, Wild. For those of you who are just joining us, these episodes have been looking behind the scenes at my latest show and explore the inspiration and techniques used to create some of the paintings. Now, if you've missed the previous episode, you can easily find them on my IGTV or on the exhibition page on my website. So, I have been saving the best for last. The grand finale, ladies and gentlemen, can I present you with Secrets of an Early Morning River. The biggest painting in the exhibition by a long way and measures a whopping a 115 by 170 centimeters. To give you a bit of perspective, that is more than three Kimbo dogs. At this point, I was gonna do a quite cool, like hold up a dog and measure him along the painting. Um, but last night on a walk, he came back with half his leg hanging off. Uh, so after a very expensive visit to the vets, um, we now have a dog with one blue leg. Oh buddy, what are you doing? You now can't partake in the film. He's on box rest for 10 days. For a dog that loves running around, this is not gonna be a good 10 days. Back in January, when I created this piece, I wasn't expecting to create an action-packed, high production value series on the exhibition. Very funny, uh -huh. very funny. Which means I have very little footage of the painting being created. So, like a budget version of the 90s docudrama 999, I will create a reconstruction to show you the process behind the painting. We've used a stuntman in some of the scenes, but all the others involved in our reconstruction take part as themselves. So we have just got to the lake and it is a beautiful day. Look at that. Um, really pleased with that. And we've got some willing models there. So the idea is I need to get close enough to the swans uh, to be able to sketch them and get a kind of start building up a body of uh, freehand sketches of different positions and little lines, etc. that kind of will build up the main piece. But they're just too far away, so we'll have to we'll have to come up with a new plan. And I think I've got a secret weapon. What a beauty! Now I just gotta hope I don't fall in. We are afloat now, which is very exciting. Um, we've got an interesting setup, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, in fact, I'll show you now. So we've got a camera on the front some bread, obviously crucial additions. Um, it's amazing how clear it is. Depths of winter and it's almost gin, gin clear. But you can see why, why I'm on this up because it's just so shallow. Rowing boat would not get through this. And there are my targets. Right, let's go and see if I can get some footage of these swans. I want footage and sketches, so it means that I need to get close enough to see them um, without scaring them. And I feel a little unstable <laughs> on this. <laughs> anyway, we'll see how it goes. They were getting closer and I'm a little bit worried because we've got some movement from the swan population who will probably go over to the other side of a lake and I'm a little bit worried that it's so shallow here that I can't actually follow them. That's a fail. Um, it's just too shallow and I can't get up any closer to the swans. But the good news is they seem to be coming towards me, so this could be... this could work. The key to this game is being well prepared, which I'm not. 
<laughs> it's just taken me ages to get the sketchbook out. And as I've done that, the swans have, um, they've gone further away. So I need to now chase them so I can get close enough um, to do some sketching. see here they're a little unsure um, but the seagulls are putting on a beautiful display I mean that is the makings of fishing right there oh it's good to be out so what I'm trying to do here is just get a general impression of what's going on and more just observe them and try to kind of come up with some interesting grouping compositions um, more importantly what i want to do is just capture notable positions that the eye or kind of that the eye picks up my eye picks up um, which i can then take back to the studio and alter somewhat um, and recompose right gotta get a little closer dead end. Ah. <laughs> Don't fall in now, Pask. Right, so I've successfully razzed up all the wildlife on this lake and the swans are now, they've coined on to the fact that I'm hanging around them. They don't like it. So they've gone over to the muddy section, which I can't get to. But I think I've got some good stuff, which is great. Um, it's so important to see see my subjects in life, uh, to see how they interact, and also just to get experience it. This day is beautiful. It's absolutely stunning. Uh, it's one of those days which are just quite rare in winter. And just to come out here, see the ducks, swans, teals, marsh harriers, um, all adds to the inspiration behind the painting. So let's get back to the studio. Right, I'm now back in the studio and our next job is to come up with a plan of action for the main piece using our sketches from life. And to do this, I am going to use the iPad because I think it will be more exciting for you at home to see the process of how it's done to the technology. My first job is to work out the composition Normally, I would use tracing paper to copy my sketches and then move them around to work out the best layout. On the iPad, it's a little different, but the same effect is achieved. What I'm really looking for here is a grouping that leads the eye around the painting. I'm going to focus on the swan with its wings out, so everything else should lead to Mr. Big Wings. Next, I need to work out where the light is coming from and how this will light the birds. It's a bit of guesswork as I'm making up the composition, but if not done properly, it will create a very unbalanced painting. Lastly, I start playing around with colours. I normally have palette or colour combination in mind, which will form the main theme, but it pays off to experiment and explore in this small sketch phase. And here is what I created for Secrets of an Early Morning River. As you can see, it's very rough and lots of notes. Essentially, it is my instruction manual for the main piece. So now I'm happy with the plan, it's simply a case of scaling the drawing up onto the large canvas and cracking on. Let's have a look at the end result. I'm super pleased with how this painting has come together. And there are a couple of key features that I love and want to show you. Firstly, the bright red in the shadows is something that makes this painting. It creates a vibration throughout the scene and gives it an almost dreamlike quality. Next is the brush strokes, which change from a vertical plane to a horizontal one at the bottom. The vertical brush marks really lift the mist, whilst the ripples in the horizontal create that shimmering that you see in arty cutscenes in films. Lastly, the palette in general is actually inspired by Monet's depiction of the Houses of Parliament in London. 
Last year, I was in Paris and visited the Musée d'Orsay, where there are the most beautiful examples of his London work. I was completely in love, and they're very much the inspiration behind this piece. So folks, that is it for the virtual tour of my exhibition, Wild. I hope you have enjoyed the show, and once again, thank you for the fantastic support throughout the last few weeks. Although the exhibition is over, I still have a few paintings available, so do have a look online for those last minute Christmas prezzies. I now need to start planning my 2021 exhibition. Stay tuned.